feeling like my life has succumbed to your damnation. And without justification, it seems I have become a slave. The views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A., and today is a Thursday, May the 25th, 2017. We have a live show for you today. Looking forward to that. And before we get into today's show, everyone continues to support Black Talk Radio Network because the only sponsors of this network is you. Not everything is free, ladies and gentlemen, so it definitely costs to maintain this overall uh, network, so please, there are no corporate sponsors that uh, this network has or uses, so it is really depending upon the overall donations and contributions of you to maintain the overall direction of this network. So, so, so very important, especially if you're someone that benefits from this network, then please give some of your energy for this network to continue to uh, do what it's been doing and bring to you what's been so beneficial and what you have considered as an as essential and has been asset. So easily you can do that by going to the website for this, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. And there is the home, that's the homepage for this network. And on that homepage, you'll be able to see the don- donation prompt that is there in green, the holding hands for this network. Just go ahead, click that, and it will uh, lead you into how you can give some of your financial energy some uh, so that this network can continue to stay on air and remain relevant in your life and for those that we have yet not named. So very, very, very important. Give some of your financial energy to Black Talk Radio Network. Also, it's another way that you can support Black Talk Radio Network. Very simply by going to the social media network that it has established for you. Engage in that. Instead of being on the mainstream social media networks, you can come on over to Black Talk Radio Network, known as BTR Community. And as BTR Community, you can find it at www.btrcommunity.com. And, or it's right there on the homepage for this network as well. For only $24 a year, you can be a part of that to ensure that this network continues, the social media network is continuing, and you can post uh, things that about yourself, about your business, uh, things that you think needs more public exposure, events that are coming up. You can do that all there at BTR Community for only $24 a year, and you can continue to post and, and actually come together in collective prudence with other like-minded individuals throughout the country and throughout the world. Very, very important because that is going to be critical, in my opinion, uh, as things start to unfold here in the untied states of America will be formally, formally known as the United States 
uh, of America. So come on over to BTR Community. It's the only place that I post. Um, I don't engage in the mainstream media because they're actually adversely using uh, the information that is getting uh, against you, and most people don't even know it and don't see it because they don't pay, they don't put any cash into it. Let me tell you something. There's much more to to the system of enslavement, much, much more. Um, and most most think, it, it, you know, a, a lion's share of it. Well, you know, because we've been taught, you know, we've, we've really been taught uh, some real untruths in, in how to develop in a process of developing what's in the best interest of of all. And before, you know, and, and I like to say, before you can even move to the best interest of all, you have to first take care of yourself to be in that position to to be there and to withstand. That is very, very critical, and that is also into your overall sovereignty as well. And that's what BTR community is doing, is trying to first take care of it, itself to make itself relevant and then be able to to multiply and make an investment forward into the future. So that is where we can do it by way of supporting this network. Very, very important. Also, if you would like to acquire real money, you can do that by going to our website for the precious metals. That's P-R-O-S-P-E-R-I-T-Y-M-I-N-T dot com. That's Prosperity Mint. You can go there and check out what's in inventory, and you can save as a king or queen or as a lady and a gentleman uh, because most of us have been paid as slaves by way of uh, instruments of debt. So you can get real assets and the most perfect form of one of the most perfect forms of money, um, that being the precious metals because of its intrinsical value. And, and some people don't understand, uh, may not get what that means, or, how, or why that is, or some may even say, no, it's not. Well, that's because uh, there is a lot of things that they don't know about the overall importance of that form of money and why um, I say it's the most perfect form of money because it, it really is because most don't know you can't live without uh, the that form of money, and particularly and especially silver. This no is human being could live here without silver and most don't understand and know why i've said it before and most didn't know but hey that is the absolute truth so very very important so uh go to prosperity mint check it out and then before you purchase please hello hello email everyone. welcome to info B-I-D-B. at prosperity mint.com info at prosperity mint.com to make sure that you are doing it correctly the um so that um, it will be, you know, so I want just want to make sure we want to make sure that you are purchasing the metals correctly and someone will respond to you um, so that that can be taken care of. So looking forward to uh, engaging in that with you all. So it's going to be there for you. Also, tomorrow, Friday, right after Tando Radio Show, uh, I'm going to hold a conference call for all of the individuals that – that signed up for uh, TradeCoin, the cryptocurrency trading platform. Let me just say this. The opportunities in, in cryptocurrencies right now is exploding, and I'm actually going to be trading it um, exclusively certain times of the day to maximize the overall return and the earnings um, that – can be possible. And I'm, I'm going to share that with everyone that um, signed up for the, uh, for the trade coin. Um, we actually, I did some of this in, in, you know, I did some of this in when we were doing the, uh, oh shoot, when, when we were doing the Forex market. And that was cool, but the, the, I really had, the, the only problem that I had with the Forex market was that it was still, uh, within the overall paradigm of the, the system, I mean, just all in. Um, but it's still good to know because it was some very, very important things that you can learn from, from being a Forex trader. Um, and those, oh, those principles and that what you learn from that can actually be applied to other markets. And I'm going to be using that uh, in the cryptocurrencies. I got out of the, the, uh, the Forex market uh, last, last summer – because I just didn't like the way things were going to be going, um, and so I just decided to wait for something else that I could resonate more with. This is perfect, and I'm going to be using 
Uh, what I've learned from, from, from years of trading in uh, the Forex market, um, and I'm actually going to be using that inside of the uh, cryptocurrency. I'm going to be trading the cryptocurrencies. And for some of them, some that were in the Forex market w with us, you know, because of some of the things that I've learned uh, in the Forex, I mean, from the Forex market, you know, I, I, was, I was able to, to read and understand patterns and fundamentals as to why things were going to be going in the direction that they were going. Um, and, you know, I did relatively well, uh, and we made some other people some, some, some meaningful cash uh, by that. But this is something that I can resonate with fully, um, and the opportunity for this is going to be, in my opinion, is going to be, oh, man, just phenomenal because it's on supply and demand. It's trading freely or as not as manipulated as other markets. And, a lot of, and, and if you're not a trader, you may not understand what that means. What that basically means is that it's based off of supply and demand. How much demand is it for the overall cryptocurrencies is what's driving the price of it up. So you could benefit from that by trading it, and I'm going to be doing that, especially, and I think this summer, uh, the cryptocurrencies is going to be a great, great place for you to add another significant stream of income for yourself, for your family, and our overall community. So I'm going to be jumping into that. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to be doing that as well as, you know, doing the other things that, uh, that we do. But um, I'm going to re-engage in this, this market because it's, I actually love the overall uh, uh, principles of it. But is there some risk? Definitely. Major, major. You never want to uh, trade what you can't lose. Uh, so, but I know from my from my overall temperament, from the years that I've been doing it, I have no problem with that at all. Um, and so that I see a great, great opportunity. I'm going to seize that, and that's what's going to continue to uh, take those earnings and put them. And it's it's a great, great opportunity because you can take digital earnings and put it into physical control. You could take something that you own and then transfer it into something physical that you can own. And so um, one of the things that I, I was looking for and, and I found what I was looking for is a place to at least minimize the overall exposure to some of the downside of the, the cryptocurrencies, that being uh, hackers and everything else. So um, I think uh, uh, to my satisfaction for my own uh, portfolio, that's been satisfied. I know, how, I know where to do that. Um, um, and it's not going to be online. I'm going to actually house um, the, the – I'm going to store uh, what I'm not trading in the cryptocurrency somewhere that's not online. So that's what I'm, that's why I'm really, really all in, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with everyone that signed up. If you would like to sign up for that, you can go to ourcryptocurrency.com our cryptocurrency.com, and it's the trade co coin platform. Sign up there. Uh, fund the account and I know last I looked at that account uh, since I've been doing it it's it's earned over uh, 300 and 300 dollars uh, since there so that's that earning I'm going to be using into part of my um, trading um, in the in the cryptocurrencies uh, somewhat similar to but in, in my opinion opinion has more more potential than uh, what was doing in the forex market because the forex market you really had to be you know be aware of the market manipulation um, and everything else and that's something that takes some time to to learn because and it could be a very expensive uh, learning curve all of, but all investment can be that way and especially trading so but I love this because um, it's not tied to any currency other than you. Uh, using the currency to to get the cryptocurrency, or are you trading the currency, the cryptocurrency, back into uh, uh, national or, or debt currency, and then using it as a medium of exchange? So, I'm looking totally forward to that. So, we'll be doing that right after Tando Radio Show for and for everyone that's a part of that. Um, you're going to just uh, text uh, text me tomorrow, or I will send you the conference call number and code for that conference call. Some some good things I'm going to be sharing with you all uh, there, and and why uh, 
we're going to be doing and, and how I'm actually going to be trading uh, this and if you're more than welcome to to be a part of that come on let's let's get what we can get and then do what it is that's in our best interest okay so let's jump into what's in the news but before we do that on we're having a seminar and it's the control your worth wealth seminar control your wealth seminar is and you can find it at eventbrite it's uh, control your wealth seminar and it's going to be july the 1st 2017 here in Dallas, and especially those of you that will be earning uh, from the cryptocurrency, that that will, believe me, I think that you'll be doing earn way more than enough to facilitate uh, your ticket coming here to Dallas and having, you know, you know, so much more because the cryptocurrencies, I think, are going to do a lot of movement in June, so I, I plan on um, taking advantage of that. And then um, come on down to the seminar, and what we're going to be talking about is controlling your wealth. We're going to be giving the, the precious metals class, a portion of the precious metals class. We will have uh, someone come in from, uh, excuse me, from uh, Legacy Wealth Management. We'll be coming in for trust and foundations. Uh, we will be looking at how to leverage uh, certain assets in the future and then collectively coming together with some opportunities um, from there. And, and I think the part of that will be a part of the cryptocurrency, uh, a portion of that will be part of the cryptocurrency and how to use that as an, uh, another revenue stream um, that's, that's happening. I, I, I don't like to give, um, but I will just say this. Um, I did extremely, extremely well um, in the past three days from trading the cryptocurrencies. And, and when I say I did really, really well to where um, I rescheduled and I re rearranged my, my schedule for just that, because I think that in certain times, at, at certain times, there are opportunities. And, I, and I've always said this is that within this collapse, you want to be in a position to seize on opportunities. Here is one, and this is why today's show, uh, today's show on Tando Radio Show, I had said that today's show, the name of today's show is that do we really know how things will shake out fiscally? But originally I had, I had a shack out. I made a mistake. I was running, running late and everything else, so I missed it. But it was, it's also, and I, I changed it, shake out fiscally. But will you... How do you re respond to that is why I put but. But what is your thoughts on it all? What are you going to do about it um, from the changes that's going to be there? One of the things that I've always said is that in this, economic, in this wealth transfer that's going to be happening, you want to make sure that the transferring of the wealth actually sweeps into you instead of sweeps away from you. You want the tide to roll in, not to roll you out. Okay? So... This is one of the opt opportunities that I was speaking about because as things start to fall apart economically and, e you know, even if they stay stagnant where they are right now or, or is in a methodical approach downward, which I think is definitely going to be a part of it all, there are things that you should be doing to position yourself while the, while the things are being – you should be more than methodical in your response to it all, because the end result is that the common person's economy is going to collapse here. And also globally. So you want to put yourself and your family in a position of advantage. So that's what we're going to be talking about. That's why it's very important for you to come down to Dallas on July the 1st, 2017. Uh, it's going to be at the Dallas, at the Dallas library. It's $300 per ticket. And, and for couples, it's uh, five fifty. So we were going to 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 have it's going to be about a four and a half hour, maybe five hour day, um, and we're we're going to also be able to come together and start to put things together collectively with ourselves. And so that's what we're going to be doing. Looking forward to seeing and meeting a lot of you. And you can info you can info prosperity info at prosperitymint dot com if you have any questions. Um, or, or comments or concerns about the event, um, come on down to Dallas and let's do this, and it's going to be a great opportunity for us all. Okay, so what's in the news? Next, next article in the news. This one came from The Hill. Ap appeals courts uphold injunction blocking Trump's travel ban. 
Let me read this. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals on Thursday, today, issued a decision upholding a lower court's injunction blocking the president, uh, celebrity figurehead President Trump, Trump's travel ban. Uh, Judge, Rogers, uh, Judge Roger Gregory wrote in a decision that Trump's executive order is steeped in... Oops. And that's where it ending. It ended. So check out um, what's happening. Now, one of the things that I think is very, very important, and I want everyone to, to, to hear this, especially those of you, um, one of the things that I talk about, I'm going to give you one of the things that I talk about in our Precious Metals class, why it's so important. In 1933, there was an executive order that Roosevelt signed that everyone, by May the 1st of 1933, had to return in all of their gold to their local Federal Reserve Bank. And if they didn't do it, they would be subject to $10,000 fine or 10 years imprisonment. And what did the people do? They were to go to hand in their gold to the bank, and then the, and the bank would give them cash for it. Okay? That was what I call the cash for gold scheme. Okay? Now, here was the thing about that. Most people say that the U.S. government confiscated gold at that time. That could be the furthest. That is not the truth. And that's why these misleading things actually, it, it, it hinders us to where we don't make sound decisions about things. There was, they did not confiscate gold at that time in 1933. One, if they gave you currency or gave you something for it, it's not considered confiscation. What they did was they swindled people out of their gold. Here's why they did it. That executive order that Roosevelt signed, no one challenged. And if they did challenge it, it was not publicized. Because why? Because it was unlawful and it had no legal standing. Not one person went to jail for it or could have gone to jail for it. Why? Because it was illegal. Even though the Constitution wasn't written for you, the benefits of it, and the overall promises of it wasn't written for you, but there are some legal standings that you can use it for. And that legal standing was when Roosevelt signed that executive order, there was not one person that could have gone to jail for refusing to give their, their gold to the bank, the private bankers. But see, this is the intimidation tactics that this government uses. And because we don't, think for ourselves and because we only have been regurgitate what the schools have taught us, we become, we fall victim to it. Just like this executive order. What did the, what did the original court say? Unlawful. What did the fourth uh, 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 courts of appeal just say? Unlawful. What would they say about the executive order of 1933? Unlawful. This is why you can't get swindled out of things. Very, very important that you have, some, you have some fundamental truths to stand on. And these are the things that we have to start to galvanize with and start using to your individual. Let me just say this. Before you can have sovereignty for your family, before you can have sovereignty for your community, you have to invoke sovereignty for yourself first. Because it all resonates around how you discern in what energy, what direction you put energy in. Very, very important. So I posted that here to say that, so check out that article. Next article. This one came from a Greek, a Greek uh, um, publication. Bomb blast targets former Greece prime minister. Car, one injured report. An explosion targeting the, the car of the former Greek prime minister and central bank and, and central banker was reported on Tuesday afternoon roughly 6:30 p.m. local time and uh, guess what happened i'm not quite sure i didn't get the follow up on it and why the, the bankers absolutely hated this individual because he spoke economic truths to the people and he told them not to go for the austerities or everything and this is why as things start to unfold this is what you're going to start to see why? Because there was a threat to getting people to be, to, to be more 
self-sustaining and not to just fall for anything that was put before him. So check out that one. Next one. Oh, man, let me, um, I'm going to have to, one second. The next article. Let's see, let me pull this one up. Oh, yes, this was this was a very, very important one, my man, uh, Brother Braggs. Um, and, oh, before we get, let me just say this also. I can't see the board because I'm somewhere, I'm not um, at a computer where I can see the board. So if you have a question or comment, just just uh, hit, just call in, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Hit star, star. Uh, that will unmute you. Just let me know that you're there and you have a question or comment. I will, I will hear you. I can't see you. So I won't be able to see the board. As you as well, Brother Bragg, um, when you're ready to come in, um, just um, let me know. Uh, by by just let me know that you're there because I can't see the board. Now this one was for my uh, my man brother Braggs put this in. This one came from the Walking Times, and this article uh, was EKG evidence that smart meters negative negatively affect the human heart. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the, the the system is just right with such ubiquitous fraud and terrorist tactics. So check out that article uh, as well. So just wanted to, to put that out because uh, Brother Bragg, you know, we had a conversation about that uh, recently. So next article, this from Sputnik U News. Russia next, genera uh, next generation military satellite successfully reaches designated orbit. And why is that so important, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's where the new wars are going to be. They're going to be terrestrial and extraterrestrial. Check out that article. Next article. This comes from uh, antiwar.com. Uh, celebrity figurehead Senator Rand Paul to force a uh, vote on massive Saudi arms deal, saying that that is going to get the U.S. in a war in the Middle East. Already there, but it's going to expand. Check out that article. Next one article comes from the Wolf of Wall Street. Catalonian threatens Spain with fiscal bloodbath. The Catalonians want their sovereignty and their, their freedom, and they actually kicked out the government there. They don't want to be governed by anyone, and they are threatening a fiscal bloodbath if Spain uh, continues to force them. Uh, so this is very, very important. One of the examples of some of the energy that's moving around the globe. Next article um, comes from Russia Insider. <clears throat> Aircraft carriers are a bluff. No U.S. president would send one against Russia or China. This is an uh, article, and I definitely would agree with this. That is old technology that is no longer relevant. Um, it is just a facade of former military presence. And it is a dinosaur of the past, and the it will no longer be able to be used to colonize and to to pillage and to fleece uh the well it's gonna well let me rephrase that they're gonna have it in a different way that old way is not gonna be the preferred method so that I, that's that's more uh closer to um how um I would want to categorize that so check out that article next article. Uh, from Russia Insider, will Venezuela be the battleground in the next U.S.-Russian proxy war? I would say yes, and it is growing, and this is something that we all should be aware of because that's going to lead into proxy wars here in the so-called United States, a.k.a. untied states of America. So... Definitely that is something that I see happening. This is a good article. Uh, we're, we're probably going to take a look at this maybe tomorrow uh, on Tando Radio Show. No, because it's something else. we got something else tomorrow, very important. So, so check out that article. Um, good for, for you to, to know. And I definitely see that happening. So next article from the Global Times, and I can't, uh, what one was this one? So I'm going to mix it. There's an article that was there from the, no, let me, let me real quickly, I can pull it up from the Global Times. And the Global Times article, and Global Times is a publication uh, out of China. The latest U.S. provocative, uh, pro, uh, excuse me, 
the latest U.S. provocation in South Sea of China is a serious strategical mistake, uh, experts say. Very, very true, because the U.S. Uh, is sending, uh, well, it says this, the U.S., the U.S. recent military actions in the South Sea of China are a serious strategical mistake, and China will not tolerate the provocative attempts and will take countermeasures, including following, following and driving away U.S. warships to safeguard its maritime security interests. Chinese military uh, strategists said today, Thursday, a USS, a U.S. guided, excuse me, a U.S. Navy guided missile destroyer sailed within tw 12 nautical miles of an artificial island built by China in the South Sea of China. U.S. officials said two, Wednesday, the first challenge to the to the, ch the first challenge to China in the South Sea of China since celebrity figurehead U.S. President Donald Trump took office. Reuters reported. So yes, that happened uh, this week, yesterday, and believe me, I definitely think that that could be the South Sea of China, as I always said, could be the flashpoint for something very, very uh, uh, a, a military confrontation. And so check out that, and I think that that's where things is going. Next article from the South China Morning Post says the uh, uh, Philippine president is use is uh, using violence. In Mando in in Mandonia to impose martial law, and I think that that is how in the future. And I posted this here because I think that is going to be the the play, the strategical play that a lot of governments will use, uh, saying that they, there's some violence somewhere that that's been actually artificially created, um, or, or or actually antagonized. To, to bring about that, that martial law. So check out that article so you can see how that is going to be used here and everywhere else. Next article from the South China Morning Post, China hits back at Moody's for downgrading its credit rating. The overall fiscal, uh, the overall fiscal un unwind, the unwinding of, of the global economy is definitely taking place in this, and it's all based in the debt so that is very, very important that you understand, that you read and, and know that and just start to put things together. Very, very important so that you can leverage yourself, your family, and our community even more. Next article from the South, uh, uh, excuse me, from South China Morning Post, U.S. accuses of sabotaging, sabotaging peace and stability in the South Sea of China. Beijing has accused Washington of undermining peace and stability in the South Sea of China by sailing a warship close to China's main, to one of China's man-made islands. And this is the one that we were talking about earlier. So this whole thing, here's what's the most important, sabotaging peace and stability. That means that there's going to be a military response to that. Check to this one. Next one. Uh, this from the Wall Street Journal, same article, same story. U.S. Navy conducts South Sea of China uh, navigational, uh, uh, nav navigational operation. That is going to bring about a war, ladies and gentlemen. Next article, this one comes from Cointelegraph.com. Bitcoin price $4,500 in South Korea as uptick race continues. And this was from yesterday. Uh, Bitcoin came down. Uh, some, uh, the cryptocurrency currencies came down uh, today, and I was happy because I, I got in right when they were, were coming down. That's why I, I said, man, I'm going to have to get back into this and, and just use what I've learned. Uh, but check out this article. Uh, South Korea, Bitcoin traders are facing, excuse me, South Korea, Bitcoin traders are facing asking price of $4,500, that's U.S. dollars, as the virtual currency price continues to surge. Order books for the domestic exchange, Coin One, lists the price of 40, 4254,254 won, and that's um, roughly around $3,800 in U.S. dollars, with a 24-hour high of uh, 4,494 4, U.S. dollars for one uh, Bitcoin. And it gave the, the different things. Check out this article. Um, 
And there's a reason why I'm saying this. And for those of you that are, are in the trade coin platform, we're going to talk about this article. And, and there's some very key information that you need to know when we start trading. And, uh, and hopefully we all will start trading together. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Um, you know, you can just, you know, if you can even start off with some platforms. I'll show you some of the platforms that actually require less uh for you to trade and they, they they charge less fees and everything else so we're going to try to get you in a position get into this is you know while this is here get what you can get out of it take always take from the market and try not to give anything back that's my motto um and that's what i'm sticking to it because it's done me so well before and uh we're going to continue to use that so that's within the news if you'd like to get in on today's conversation give us a call 866-510-9025 866-510-9025 and before we get going in today's show Oh, just so you know, I'm not able to see the board, so if you have a question or comment, I won't be able to see you at all. Hit star, star. Then um, just, you know, let me know. I, I can hear you. Just, you know, say excuse me, uh, or, and then I will hear you, and we'll, we'll, so your question and comment can be made up. Very, very important. So today's show, we got Brother Braggs is going to be coming on in a little bit. We're going to be talking about some other things uh, as well. But before we do that, I want to uh, touch on today's topic. Do we really know how things will shake out? fiscally but and i wrote that but for the but is for you as an individual and this is a individual excuse me one moment this is an individual choice and i say that because there's going to be things that's going to be happening in the economy that you have no control over but you can there's some things that you can do to leverage yourself or position to yourself to your control, meaning the prices of food, the prices of the CPI, Consumer Price Index, is going to be going up, but there are things that you could be doing because you may not be getting paid more at whatever it is that you do in private business, uh, working for someone, self-employed, uh, whatever it is that you do. But there are things that you can do to, to actually increase where it won't affect you as much or to where it won't be an adverse effect on you at all. So that's what the but is. I don't know how things are going to shake out. I really don't have to know because I didn't create this system. But what I did do, what I do have control over is my response to it all. And my response to things is that I'm going to take a very proactive approach to it as much as I possibly can. The onus was always on me. I'm not waiting on anyone for anything because I can do things myself. And I, I firmly believe this is, you know, what I live by. Uh, what other people live by is their choice. I never, ever try to infringe on someone else's free will. If the great creator can't make someone do something, what makes you think you can or I can or is, is it our place to? And it's for me is no. So, you know, this may not resonate with, with people. I totally understand that. I get it. This may resonate with people. I totally understand that. I get it. But the choice is still always yours. And, and I know that I'm taking a stance to it because there are things that I see because I spend energy and time in things. And because of that, it has done me very well. It has positioned me very well. It has actually, uh, absent of emotion, I don't, I try not, at least I try not to use emotion to dictate decision making. I try to let it, I, I try, I'm emotion, I have emotions, but I don't allow them to, to determine my overall decision making. That is done based off of principles, fundamental principles. So, Things are going to be getting worse. Okay. You didn't cause it to get worse, but it's still going to do that. Now, what, what are you going to do? After you make that statement, what now? What really matters is, is that it doesn't really matter if you know things are going to get worse and there's not, not a proactive approach that you're going to take to it. 
It doesn't matter if you know things are going to get better if you're not going to take a proactive approach to it. Because if you are going to do nothing, then that means that the energy of those that are controlling the economy for its direction is going to sweep you along with its momentum. With their momentum. Very, very important. Or you can have a choice to do something very proactive. And I would say this, there is a process in everything. I know one of the the bad things about some of the movements in the market is that they are, some of them are emotionally driven. Some of the moves in the Bitcoins and some of the, you know, moves, some of those are emotionally driven. But the people that will be able to distinguish the difference between the fundamental moves and the emotional moves will do much better. I think you have to be able to distinguish the difference. Very, very important. So as things start to go, I don't know exactly how things are going to shape out. Um, nor do I want to know how things are going to shape out. My main concern is to look at how I'm going to use my energy, my free will, to better position myself, my family, and my community. And then from that, learn from others in my community and learn from others in my family that may have a better um, a opportunity or have different talents because we all have different talents. And if we start to galvanize and use our talents and, and resources and capabilities together, that puts us all in a better position. Much, much better. I hear that uh, someone is there. I don't know. I think it's Brother Braggs. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Brother Braggs, is that you? Oh, yeah, I'm here, Dave. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Peace, peace, brother. Hold on one sec. I'm almost done with this before we jump into the next part of it. So, it's very, very important that we do things. I know for, for me, I try to minimize my overall institutional footprint. They say there's something called a digital footprint, but there's also an institutional footprint. And, and I know, you know, from, from, from their, their, their media, their entertainment, their banking, their economy, I try to minimize my overall footprint in that and move in my own direction. Is it popular with people and my family and some of my, fr- some of my friends and associates? Watch this. It doesn't really matter because they're not me. They're not responsible for what I have taken on the responsibilities to ensure. That is something that is individual. Now, from within my associates, within my friends, and within my family, there are things that we look at collectively and say, what can we do together that will best serve us? And there's nothing like that in the world. Nothing like that in the world. So what I'm saying is that we don't know how things are going to shape up. And, sh- uh, and how things are going to shake out. We don't know uh, because we didn't create this, this system. But those that have created the system and hold a patent on it and, and, hold, and, and control the assets of it, their energy will determine the direction. Just like a, a, a passenger on the Titanic They can choose to hit the iceberg at any darn time, or they may already have. In my opinion, they have long ago. The moment that we got on the Titanic was the ceiling of our financial ceiling, dead man walking or dead woman walking financially. And it's been evidence of that ever since. Evidence of that ever since. And it comes in different layers. Some are affected adversely by it at different times. I'm going to say this. There are going to be, even in the the, the wealth transfer, there are going to be some people that make a lot of currency. And then from that, be able to control a lot of assets. There will be fortunes that will be made and fortunes that will be lost. 
determines how you resonate with either spectrum that you're on. And I would say this, we have to be careful of, of having lofty, unrealistic expectations. And why do I say that? And I say that because of this. You have to remember something. Have you ever seen Naked and Afraid? Have you ever seen that on, on TV, something called Naked and Afraid? Very good for this standpoint. You, took, you had people that their whole life lived on man's economy. But in their leisure and in their recreation, they were doing some ancestral things, but they weren't really perfecting them because the overall art of their ancestral culture has been lost. And it can be regained, but it's going to take time to perfect it. So what happens on Naked and Afraid? They take people, they take their clothes off, and they go out in the elements, and they go through hell. So before you try to establish a new economic system, you better realize that it's going to be a process to do it. And it's not going to be an easy process. It's going to be something that you're going to have to take time to do it, just like it took time to destroy us into subjugation and enslavement. It didn't happen overnight. That's some fantasy thinking, unrealistic, unrealistic fantasy thinking. So what do you do? You work where you are and you gradually move toward and you energize yourself towards a direction knowing is going to be a process. Can you get off of this economic, man's economic system right now? Yes, you can. But I would say to you, if you've been on it your whole life and you're just going to go cold turkey right away and go live in the ecosystem, you're going to have problems. You're going to have major problems. But can you do it? Yes, you're resilient enough to do it. But here's what's happening. You don't have the overall skills. And the thing about the ecosystem is that it's fair and it's, it's, re, it's, it's realistic. If you come into it with some, under, some proven understandings, it will, that energy will, will work from you. But it will not give you anything just because you are. It doesn't just give you anything. It's a process of learning. This is why it was so important for us to never have given up our culture because it's a very, very disastrous path to get back on it. That's what we're on now. So let's be realistic. And I would say this, you don't, you, we could say, I could say for us, let's be realistic, but if you choose not to be realistic, that's going to be your choice at all. But the reality is going to be, when we ignore, you can ignore reality, but you can never ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. You better have some proven truths. And part of that proven truths is that you have to realize something. You naked and you afraid. And, and, and I say that because you're not accustomed to it. You're going to have to take baby. It's just like being addicted to a drug. If you just go to cold turkey all of a sudden, the overall, your body's chemical reaction will cause for the body to shut down. Done. Finito. Over. And it's a very violent process that is. What makes you think something as important as sovereignty wouldn't have a violent, violent uh, uh, withdrawal when you haven't been sovereign and now you're trying to move to being sovereign it's just like if you're trying to if, let's say uh, I'll take Brother Bragg's for, for, for example Brother Bragg had to go through a process of controlling his diet and his weight if he would have went cold turkey without anything else substituting and helping and assisting his body and aiding him getting to where he wanted his objective to be, 
He would have starved to death. That's not a... That's where people that get... What's that uh, one uh, bleep? I don't know. What's, what's that disease of the people get? Uh, bulimia? Where, where they, 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 there's actually a sickness. It's a mental illness that comes upon you because your body doesn't have the nutrients and the, and the necessary energy to, and the, the whole chemical balance changes. What makes us think that that is just something physical and is not something that's energy-based? It's the truth. Is the truth. So our objective should all be the same, but there has to be a method to getting to that objective. And some of those methods, by way of tools, are going to have to vet themselves out as being the best practices to get us where you're going. Just having a dream and wanting to do it real, real bad, praying about it real, real hard, just won't make it happen. It's your energy that makes it happen. It's your energy that has got us here. It's our energy that keeps us here. And it's our energy that's going to require us to put us on a course somewhere else. If you are ever on a ship and it's going to change its course, it has to use energy against the sea in order to go in a different direction. No different. So let's be careful about what we ask for. If we're really not willing to sacrifice to obtain it, then all it, all it really is is a pipe dream. It is a pipe dream. And this society has taught us to be pipe dreamers. And dreams have a way of becoming nightmares, and nightmares have a way of becoming reality. So I think that it is something that every individual's power is so great. But there's a responsibility, power, without discipline is destructive. Power without dis discipline is destructive. So I think that we should be engaging in many disciplines, many, many disciplines for us to really be able to harness and to effectively use the force that we have within our free will. So that's something that I, I I'm, I'm think that is, that's the direction that I know that I'm making um, in, in doing and, and not everything is going to go perfectly well. I'm fine with that. Um, there's, there may not be people, you're not going to get all the support that you expect to get. I'm fine with that. You're, th this and that. And then some things, there's going to be some surprises of, of, on all forms, good surprises and bad surprises. But see, bad situations are good, sh bad situations or, or beneficial sh situations should never change you. Bad situ a, a bad situation should never change a good person. Good people should b change bad situations. So, we don't know how things are going to shake out. But what you can do, regardless of where you are, and if you come with, yeah, but, that is something that you're going to have to first be able to navigate between your ears. That is something that you're going to have to. Uh, because, unfortunately, I don't think the ecosystem has a lottery system. Is there good fortune? Yes. Is, is, are, are there uh, unfortunate circumstances? Yes. But still, good or bad, you still have to respond to it, and it can change the direction of what has happened. Bad things that happen to you can be changed by your response to, a good, uh, to good things that happen to you. Good things happening to you can change, your response can change to it and cause for, for other adverse things to happen to you. And I would always say, not all adversity is a bad thing. 
sometimes it's a great motivating force depending on how you resonate so just wanted to say that um, we're getting ready to go into a commercial break then we come back my man brother Braggs is going to be here we're going to jump on the line with brother Bragg and talk about some things um, that, that you know that we should should know but if you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time give us a call 866-510-9025 hit star star I can't see you I'm not on the board can hear you um, give us a call 866-510-9025 866-510-9025 then hit star star we'll see you in queue and, um, well, I, no, sorry, that's what I usually say. Uh, hit star, star, you'll be in queue, and all you got to do is just say, hey, uh, you know, Dave got a, a question or, or got a comment. We'd love to hear from you. You're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. Um, we're going to take a, a little longer break real quick, about a, a minute longer. Then we're going to come back with Brother Braggs. Um, and you're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Talk Media Project funds the use of new media technology in efforts to restore independent black voices to the myriad of issues affecting Afro-descendant people all over the planet. If media can control the minds of the masses, as Malcolm X once said, then you must ask yourself, who is in control of the media targeting the masses of black people today? Help bring back independence, self-determination, and respect for black culture in the production of global media by joining the effort to crowdfund new black media for the new millennium. Visit blacktalkmediaproject.org for more information on how you can invest in public black radio Ah! for the masses. Make Black Talk Radio your choice for digital black radio. New black media for the new millennium. And I'm okay, welcome back, everyone. Kikando Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A. And if you'd like to get in on the conversation today, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, then hit star, star. Um, and I would also say be careful um, where, where you go. And if someone offers you some water, uh, being polite because they don't know, and they bring you some water, then you drink the water, and then all of a sudden, you notice your body responds to it, and then you already know, oh, man, that's that daggone fluoride water. And then you kind of look to see what kind of water they have, and lo and behold, it's one of those bottled waters that they had fluoride, and they just brought it to you, and you're just like, ah. Oh. But you know right away because if you've gotten off of fluoride, a little incident that happened to me uh, recently, like today. So crazy, crazy, crazy. So definitely. And before we get going, um, let me just say this. Man, Cece, it, she truly does have the golden voice of BTR community. I always love hearing, man, Cece's voice is phenomenal. It's It's a very, very... She has a very, very powerful, powerful delivery and voice, and I absolutely uh, love that about her. Um, I need to actually reach out to Cece. Much love to Cece, and I, they, they will be uh, coming on. I think uh, B.I.B. will be coming on right after Tando Radio Show, so make sure you stick around for uh, Brother Robert X and the golden voice of BTR community, Cece. Actually, need to catch up with them as well, myself. So, so. Love hearing her voice. Okay, so there may go to uh, my man, Brother Braggs, is there. If you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Then hit star, star. We'll see you in queue, and then uh, we'll bring you up. One thing, uh, tomorrow, uh, definitely want you to be here for tomorrow's show. Um, we're going to um, want to engage in 
And, and big ups to my uh, uh, to, to my sister, uh, Strategic Melanin. She said she she saw a documentary on uh, the blackout, and so tomorrow we're going to be looking at that and uh, deciphering that because I think that gives us some real good clues as to some things that's going to be happening and what we should be uh, looking at. So we're going to actually take a look at that on tomorrow tomorrow show. So be around for that one. That's going to be a, a good one. So. Uh, without further ado, we're going to go to my man, Brother Braggs. Brother Bragg, are you there? Yes, peace, peace. Peace, peace, Brother Braggs. Thank you, Brother, always for you just being you. What's going on, Brother Bragg? Oh, man, Dave, from what the conversation we had this morning, man, I went into these Stuart Kings, man, because, see, you know, we, we, you know me and you, all right, people, I don't want to... So shade on the conversation. Me and Dave have these conversations. We were talking about these Moorish kings this morning. We were talking about yep. how these Moors, once they were defeated in 1492, they were not only defeated, they were pursued wherever they went. So they tried to go get to their stronghold back in West Africa. They went to Morocco. They came into Morocco and get it. Remember, these, these wait, Moors, wait, wait, hey, brother, they weren't just Moors. Brother, brother. Wait, wait, hey, brother Bragg. Um, t- t- who was give the basis? Who was chasing them all over the world? So it kind of because there's a real these, reason. These crusaders, the Roman Catholic Church, was chasing these boys wherever they went. The wealth that they had was so great that they couldn't really hide it. Also, the books that they that they, they, con- they control, the knowledge mm. they control, yes. is a threat to world order because they enlighten people and just it's just really deep so yeah i, I will never vilify the moors because their story is too interesting the moors just have a lot of laundry though because you have to remember mussolini and his boys they used the moors uh Kenia, right. he used the moors so these british people have always traditionally used this fraction of the moors now i don't know if they particularly could see you remember these British people used to do this too. They used to take their children and raise them up as, as mercenary armies. The same thing they did in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is another created state that was a black state that was taken over by the French, the British. Man, this this stuff is really deep. And you gotta yep. you gotta follow you gotta follow the names to see they try to they try to lose you in the names. But if you stick to the trail like a hound dog, and when I say stick to the trail, you're always gonna find out it's going to be the German people, Jewish people, French people, Portuguese people, Dutch people, and the, the English. The British people initially were all melanated people. Remember that. Um, okay, back to the Stuart kings. The Stuart kings were Morris kings and Jacobian kings. And I'm saying that these are black Moors and these are black Jews. Jacobians being Jewish who follow the, the Talmud and everything. These, this is the royalty of England. Now... These people lost power. When they get lost power, the Europeans wanted them out. Que- hey, um, Brother Braves. You got all. Yes, sir. Quick question uh, to lessen confusion. Um, isn't there like two classification of Jews, Ashkenazi, which is um, European? We talk. We talk about European. Yeah, right? and Sephardic now, is the other one. People. Sephardic would when be everybody Jewish, else, we- right? I'm sorry. I said Sephardic Jews would be everybody else. That's not Ashkenazi, right? Right. Well, the, remember the first the first um, Jews were, would look like you and me. Hebrew. Before the Europeans took your name. Yeah. Remember the all through Europe. Okay, we got to start like this because this is how I had to start. Europe began as a melanated place. The Iberians were black people. Phoenicians. Uh, Scotland, Ireland, all these are melanated people. Vikings, a lot of the main till of the hunt, these were melanated people. Uh, the Mongols started off as melanated people, but they got involved with the Aryans and they got bleached out. So, man, it's really deep when you think about it, because this is how these people are able to hide. Now, if you go into Europe and you start just checking all the coats of arms, it'll really blow your mind because you see all these German names with all the coats of arms. They look like you and I. And this is a young man, because I'm telling you, I've been on this, this, this trail for like 30-some years now. And the coats of arms from J.A. Rogers threw me off initially as a young man because I had, a, had the, the 100 Great Facts and I have all J.A. Rogers' books. And I was like, who are these 
black people, but the country's all white. But the country's all white because once they wipe you out, they take on your culture, they take on your name. They write the books. Just like here in America, paper genocide with the swat of a pen. They turn indigenous people into Negro. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Brother Braggs, Brother Braggs. I'm sorry. And, and, I'm and I wanted to just, no, 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 it's perfect. I just, I just wanted to reemphasize. Man, I think that that was the, the best that I've ever heard. The paper genocide. That is so, that is so tree, true. And then now they move the paper genocide into the digital genocide. And this is where uh, findyourancestry.com and all this other stuff, all that was, oh, man, Brother Brax, go ahead. I just wanted to make that point. Great, great. Go ahead, Brother Brax. But, but, but look, you can't even let them throw you with that either because remember this, we're talking about these steward kings. Now, these steward kings are Moorish. They're melanated people, just like the Jacobians, part of the, the, those, those people are Jacobians. They're melanated people looking like you and me. Now, when you talk about the Agonazi, you're talking about Europeans who came and took the identity. Now, remember this. These people who, who call themselves Jews or German Jews, whatever you want to call them, they send people to school. To, and people who, after they studied your culture, they schooled their people in your culture and took on your culture through instruction. Just like here in America, you got Native, and then you got Americans, and then you got Auto, auto, auto times, or an indigenous people. Now, auto times are the people that come from the earth. You, you, you link right to the earth. But what this dude Plager did is he paid for genocide. They made it a crime for you to call yourself an Indian. So they wiped the whole race of people. When they say they, they wiped out the Indians, they didn't wipe out the Indians. They paid for genocide of the Indians. They created five dollar Indians, and they took the five civilized tribes who now look all look like. Europeans. Now, if you go, go, and this is in the, in, in the, um, you can go to the, um, uh, federal archives. They got all kind of pictures in Washington. You can see real Indians, 1500s, who look just like you and me, who was all over this country. California Indians. Look, once again, now you're making me digress again. My mind be jumping all over the place. You, you're standing in the middle of Egypt. You don't have to believe me. Check the monuments. All of the, 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 the ritual, the grave sites, all over America from the ancient ones. And you, the ancient ones, people that look like you and me, these Europeans came here. And you hear people screaming out, I'm American. No, they're not American. They're naturalized citizens, neutralized citizens. They, they, they work for the government, in other words, the way they just got it hooked up. But you and I are from this country. And that's where I always talk about know what you're standing on. Because, see, I heard... Uh, if Donald Trump or one of his people say they were talking about sending Indians back to India. Christopher Columbus was lost. He was an Indian. So how are you going to send people back to a place that they weren't from in the first place? You lost. He was the only person lost. You got to see what they did all over the world. They moved people around. When they started talking about these DNA tests, now remember they enslaved the Irish and brought them here. Now, initially, the Irish people that they brought here, these enslaved Irish, once again, they were J Jacobians, so they were Jewish. They were black Jews. They brought them here and enslaved them. At the same time, they was bringing those Jews from Ireland, Scotland, and Welsh. They were also bringing a bunch of black Jews out of Africa, and they all converged on the Mississippi River, and they all went into the slaves' auctions together. One, one bunch of, uh, of the... Uh, African Jews and one bunch of Irish Jews all went into the slave markets in the Americas together. Now, the other thing about when we start talking about the so-called slavery, remember this. Foreign people came to their land and started stealing the women and children. You don't have, you don't have to believe me. Do the, do the research. I don't want nobody to believe me. Everything I say and tell you is for educational purpose. My education is ongoing. I study things every day. But if you if you study, you'll find out things. This stuff is remarkable. So you gotta you gotta put things in proper perspective. So we'll start like this. Remember the European is coming out of Europe. They're they're totally repressed over there because they're living under the, the rights of, the laws of kings. They're bound to the land. It's, they don't have any rights whatsoever. Only the rights that the king gives. So they're steeped in Roman law. Now the land is diseased. I'm totally diseased. The people are falling out. 
The worst of the people, they take them and they banish them to other places, the ones they can't. So now, these people finally broke out of Europe. They come to a pristine environment. Now, they came here following these Moors. I'm telling you, that's how they came. Christopher Columbus had Moorish navigators, so they twisted the Moors on. And remember this, some Moors came here as slaves. You had Greeks that came here as mercenaries. You had Assyrians that came here as mercenaries. These are the people that they employed to help enslave you in this country. Now, another thing to put in perspective. At the same time that this is happening in America, this is happening all around the world. They up in, they up in uh, India. You got the area. Now, all of these are these British Germans now, mind you. Because, see, that's what you got to follow. It's the same group of people who co-opted the world with the hand of the church and all these different secret knights of Malta, all these secret societies. Remember also, well, you may not know, but they had what they call the Knights Templar. These was a, a black organization, a secret society fraternity. They were rich. They were, they were directly re related to these, uh, these Moors. Their great wealth disappears. Somewhere in the Americas, they don't know where it went. It went underground. They, and they killed a whole bunch of the Moors. Now remember, they were hunting these Moors down and, and murdering them wherever they could find them. Robbing them, murdering them. That's what the Inquisition, they followed them wherever they could. The whole thing was not to ever let the Moors regroup and get a stronghold again. Brings us to America, the same here in America. Same people who orchestrated that, 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 those things are orchestrating the same things here in America right now. Just do your research. It's, it's really interesting. I, I don't want to, you know, complicate things because there's so much stuff involved in there. These people all around the world, they, they use the same tactics. They went into these places. They gave them, either you take the God or you take the sword or you take the, the bullet. So they convert you to their religion. They co-opt your food supply. They co-opt your water supply. Once they co-opt your food supply and your water supply, they send it all back to Great Britain, back to Europe. And you, these countries now feed Great Britain and Europe. All of Africa right now is feed Great Britain and Europe and Israel and America because all these boys are parasitic together. You think I hit it on the head there, boy? What? <laughs> of course, and you know there was a there was, there was I didn't want to interrupt. And what's so important about that? Some of those, some of that colonization and those uh, uh, genocidal moves were were actually you still see them being played out today in all forms in all fashions, and it continues today. And and the thing that really. Uh, T takes me that when 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 I research all of this, one of the things, some of the things that you know, from the precious metals standpoint, is that when you research, and this is one of the things that I'm a, I'm gonna say this, and I hope everyone gets me when I say that, subjugation and enslavement started because of the precious metals, and the only thing that's going to end it is that. And what I mean by that, and I'm not, you know, and, and people may misunderstand what I'm saying with that, is that it was a, ma a matter of controlling assets how you can best position yourself globally to control assets by enslaving an energy source that will harvest the assets for you and bring it to you. And this is where these organizations and these, these individuals and these societies start to spring about. And their overall, you know, the, the Brother Braggs had talked about, excuse me, one second. Brother Braggs had talked about how they how they played themselves out and, and historically here in the in the so called United States. Re remember, the United States is by way of conquer, not by existence from indigenous status. Very, very important. United States and this is why everything that they do is under a battle flag, because they're in. This is why this this so-called nation is always in continuous, perpetuous wars, because that's what established it. That's what established, and those that it w it was at war with, and how or who they the system was able to conquer, and to make prisoners of the war are those that were indigenous to this geographical area that was here. 
meaning the indigenous, meaning that they were naturally here originally by birthright. And they didn't establish any form of federation of manifest destiny, meaning they didn't establish where they were going to go out and conquer. There was no need to do that, but there were others in the world that thought that was necessary in order for them to survive. And this is where you have what we, we have today. And, and, and from, you know, from the, the, the Knight Templars to the Moors and, 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 and everyone else, it's just the further progression of that into today. This is why when you go to Washington, D.C., you see monuments that memorialize their objective. That's what, that's what a memorial is. It memorializes a, it's, it memorializes a cause, an energy, a thought, a practice. Very, 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 very important. And Brother Braggs is, is, is absolutely right with this. It is the, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to uh, yeah, when we get through. I, I want to give you this website because this is all about Britain. Because see, guess what? When you know about Britain, you up on game. Check this out. It's called uh, HistoryWorld.net. It's the history of Great Britain from 1707, and it goes like this: the first decades, national identity, active union, Hanoverians and Jacobians, the Whig supremacy, South Sea bubble, the age of Waypole. Malaysian stately homes, industry, war, 1744 to 63, America, 1763 to 83, the economy, 1767 to 92, Ireland, 1778 to 1800, Neapolitan, Neap Neap Neapolitan, 1800 to 1500, the need for reform, Victorian era, 1837 to 1854, Victorian era, 1854 to 1901, and it brings us up to snuff. It tells Look, Britain is a beast, man, and they, and I, I don't know how people sleep on them because actually they're the hand behind everything. If you really want to look at it, now these stewards that were kings, what happened to them? They got usurped. The whole steward, the stewards, these were the once again the Moorish faction and the Jewish faction of a black royal dynasty that got taken out, and you got other people that replaced them. How did they get replaced? What happened to them? King James, what happened to him? These are all black kings. What happened to him? So you got these people calling themselves British and English. They come and take control. At the same time in America, 1776, the war of supposed revolutionary war here in America is actually when they subdued the black races here in America, the indigenous people of America, whether you want to call them Indians or Egyptians or Negro colored or Creole, whatever you want to call them, the indigenous people of the Americas. It's pretty interesting to me. It, it, it gasses me. It keeps me keeps me hunting. Yeah, and you know, brother Braggs, it, it's when you look at if you look at the the statehood of of Britain, they've been known to always be a brutal people because they're a warring people. And you're absolutely, they're, they're behind everything. Now, when you look at it from the standpoint of the, the city-state, you have the city of London, and there's four city-states in the world. The city of London, which is known as the financial hub of the world. Washington, D.C. is known as the military uh, arm of the world. Then you have the Vatican, which is the, the, the religious uh, part of the world. Then you have Basel, Switzerland, which is for BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, the ones that that actually pollinate, that that write the policies for economies. Dave, you have a call to control. And, and all these, okay, we're gonna go to that call. And all of these work uniformly together. Very, very important. So, Scotty, if you would uh, bring that individual up, um, 
Oh, so, don't worry about it. I do, the individual that's there for for a call, I don't know what your area code is or your your first uh, numbers are. Uh, wh what's your name? Where you're calling from? And what is your question or comment for uh, Brother Bags or in general? What's up, man? Hassan calling from Seattle. Hassan, how you been, brother? What's going on? <laughs> oh man, I've been weathering the storm, man. It's been a windy one. It's yeah. <laughs> Good, good, yeah, good to hear from you, brother. What's happening? What's happening? Man, I, I, I haven't really been able to chime in too much. I've only been able to chime in here and there, and I just happened to chime in today. And then, well, man, it's yeah. always good to hear from you, brother. It's always good to hear yeah. from you, Hassan. What, what's happening? What's on your mind? What, what, what are we talking about? I just wanted to say, I, I had to chime in real quick because I'm, I'm actually uh, about to pull up to a movie audition, and I'm running late, and I got to get off the line and call my agent. But, um... I just wanted to say to anybody that is listening, I just want to say anybody that is listening, because Brother Bragg's everything he was saying, he was like, you know, don't believe me, research it for yourself. Every single word that he just said is is a hundred percent true, and I've thoroughly researched it. I'm got continue to this day. Just found a book yesterday in the bookstore that I didn't even know was there that just confirmed uh, everything that he just said, plus plus some stuff he didn't say. So. So he's on, he's yeah. on point, Brother Bugs. And, and I also wanted to say, because, you know, we can look up all this stuff and research everything, and, you know, it's, it's interesting information, but, uh, you know, a lot, some people may or may not know what to do with the information because there is something that, that can be done that, that, that we can do to, uh, to utilize and enforce all this information that that's the truth. Which is which is correct in our, our our legal status and our nationality with with this corporation of the United States, and I, I know that you know because I I know it comes up every now and then on the show. I mean I've mentioned it. Brother Braggs always mentions it, and you say it sometimes. But no, you know none of us ever really say what it is that could be done. You know which which is correct in our legal status. Like our Moorish government is is is, is it, it was and is set up, and it was set up a hundred years ago. And and judging off of you know what 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 you're saying, I know that you know I know you know who Noble Drew Ali is and and you know and, and mm -hmm. the things that he did and and, and how and how he set everything up. So we're just so we're to come out from up under this corporation and 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 run under our own, which which is already established with us as as, as Moorish Americans. <clears throat> yeah, and, and you know what you know. Uh, you know, a uh, great, great point, uh, Hassan, because, you know, a lot of times uh, uh, we have information, um, and then w what is it that we're to do with it? And, you know, that becomes an individual choice, because when you found out this right. information, what did you with it? T t tell everyone what you did with it. Well, w w what I did was I, I, I started to, I went, I went on a journey to, of confirming all this information that I was coming across, which is, you know, that, that takes time alone, which is, you know, uh, yeah. that's a couple of years alone of confirming it. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a couple of years of, of finding it and getting it and retaining <laughs> it. And then it's a couple of years of confirming it. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, 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 so for me, you know, what I've done is, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I've, I've, uh, I still have a couple more steps to take, but I've corrected my legal status and, and, and I'm and I'm I'm in the process right now of establishing our our, our governmental uh, offices up here, which which will be called a more science temple. <clears throat> that's, that's and you know I'm, uh, that's, uh -huh. yeah, and and I said that for because you know Hassan. Um, now tell everyone when when you were going through your process, how was hey, it received um, family wise Dave, and friend wise? Dave, I have a question for the caller. What's the caller's name? That's Hassan. Uh -huh. Hey, hey, Hassan. This uh, Scotty here. Um, I want to ask you a What's question on, first. I will uh, make a request that you send me some of those links to where I can go read about um, a Moorish uh, nation being incorporated, or or however you want to frame it. Um, but right. I want to ask you a question, not not to try to contradict you or anything like that. But I do research too. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah. And. And my research was Noble Drew Ali was a uh, half Cherokee from Cherokee Nation, which I have an uh, ancestor that was in the Cherokee Nation before they got sent out to 
to Oklahoma and an African uh, father. Now, there's some dispute of whether or not his father was enslaved or or not. Uh, the records I saw said, you know, but that was his parentage, an African man and a Cherokee woman. And and so um, he founded the Moore Science Temple, if I'm not mistaken. It was founded in the north. Um, I believe it was mm-hmm. in Illinois. But it was found. No, 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 it was, it was, it was. He did it. He 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 did it first in New Jersey, and then okay. uh, and then he had to move west. Yeah, and, I know he then, left and North Carolina. He, and then he, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I I wasn't clear on that, but I know he didn't do it here in North Carolina. But it is founded as a religious institution, just like the right, yeah. of Islam, and just like. Um, some of these other, or, or, well, just any mega three. church with a 501c3. So if you could send me that information that you came across in terms of a legal entity already exists, but I would submit to you, brother, that, um, like Dave talk about us being born with rights and stuff. There's no denying that USA Inc., we're living under their jurisdiction and their power and, and, right. and what have you. Um, but a nation, to me, is the people even without a government because yeah. a nation may, is people with a shared culture or shared history a shared land and we have all of that so we do already in fact have a nation but we are occupied nation right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. one one occupation and, and, remember and prisoners all of other right nations look to us here in this nation all other nations right. look to us whether you guys realize it or not we are we are the nation that everybody follows whether you realize it or not Everybody watches what we do here in America. Yeah, we're, so there's a reason we're a beacon of light for the whole entire that. planet. Yeah, we're, we're a beacon of light for the whole entire planet, and and the whole entire planet is not is not is, is, is never ever gonna it's never gonna it's never gonna get any better or 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 or, or, uh, or get corrected until until we get corrected until we correct ourselves. Which is also we also cause all this all of this on ourselves too, you know. If 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 you really go into the history and, and everything, but uh, but like but going back to what, yeah, but going back going back to what you were saying, Scotty. Like you saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, Hassan. Uh-huh. Hassan, hold on one second. We got to get ready to go to a commercial break because I don't want I don't want that commercial break to, to interrupt because it's very important. I don't want you to to be interrupting what you're about to say um, because it's very very important and there's a reason why I asked Hassan this because. Uh, it, it's really something that should be engaged upon by by many, but very few do it. Listen, you're listening to Tango Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. For podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. This is the last 30 minutes of today's show. If you'd like to get in on it, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Um, we have uh, Brother Braggs, uh, and we got my man Hassan uh, called in. Um, great, great point, and, and, you know, very, very important, you know, and, and so I, I really want to, to personalize this um, so, so that those that may be interested in this, if you notice some of the things that is not something that you, you know, engage in overnight, it is a very, very long process. And I'm so glad Hassan said that because that was, you know, the point that I, I really wanted to, to, to emphasize is that it's incumbent upon you, as we talked about in the beginning of this show. So um, we're going to go back to Hassan. Hassan, you were making the point just before we went to the break, um, and, I, and I want you to, to pick back up with, on the point that you were making um, before we went to the commercial break. Yeah, I was, I was just going back to what Scotty, Scotty had said when he, when he said that, you know, we are a nation, like as a people, like we're, all, we're already a nation. But see, the whole entire world at this point is not, it's, it's all, it's, a, it's just a bunch of corporations. 
Like everything, every like like you said, every uh, who said they said paper paper genocide, right. and then you said digital genocide. Everything, everything is all is all the paperwork and and and, and going off of law and and treaties. And so it's, so everything is a corporation. So we we, we are who we are. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything is contracts. I mean, we contracted everything ourselves into the situation that we're in. Yeah, 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 yeah. We contracted ourselves into the situation we're in now. And, right. and and we just have to and we got to resend those contracts and correct them. So, but uh, I'm losing my train of thought. So, so basically, yeah, we are we are who we are regardless. But uh, as far as far as as far as taking our seat amongst the affairs of men, uh, uh, you know, um, um, among, amongst amongst the planet, and and because everything is business at this point, everything is business. Uh, everything, the whole entire. Except for you know when we're alone dealing with our spirituality and stuff like that, but uh, outside of that, everything everything is commerce. The whole entire planet is, is just a bunch of corporations doing commerce. That's all it is. Right. And so, and, and, and one, in one one city, there may, there may be a million uh, corporations in one city. So right, right, exactly. the District of Columbia is being the capital of all corporations. That whether whether that capital is Madrid, Spain, D.C. is the is the capital of all corporations. This is an international. These corporations are like a spider web all around the world. They interconnect. Right. That's how they control. Yeah. People die exactly. off. The corporations don't die off. They went from plant. They went from guilds to plantations to corporations. Now you got the corporations running the world. Where before that you had the plantations only running the world. Before that you had the guilds. You couldn't even steal without being a part of the guild. But now the guilds are right. the corporations. So you can't steal now unless you're a corporation, LLC or whatever. However you want to fit up in there. When, when most right. everything you see is a corporation. When you see the names on these on these businesses or people on TV, notice it's all in all caps. That's a corporation. That's the maximus. It's not the minimus. When the, when it's maximus and minimus, it's the regular name. So one of them be no straw man, and the other one's a, a real person that actually is a god person. I guess that's right. right. Exactly. I don't want to confuse anybody, man. And, no, no, you're not. Yeah. Like it, yeah. yeah. No, 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 you're not, Brother Brett, and it's, it's so important, and, and, and I would just say to you all, everyone look up what Washington, D.C. means, particularly the D.C. portion of it, the District of Columbia. Look, USA, do some, USA versus United States of America, that's what blew my mind, that's what got me on my path. You, a dude told me, he said, Google, USA versus United States of America, one part just you period S, period A, and then write the other part, United States of America, write it out. And that's what blew my mind. That's when I found that, that there's a game going on that we're not quite all familiar with. Some people yep. are in the game and other people are outside <laughs> yeah. the game. So we, we got this alternate reality going on that some of us are not aware of, so we're not conscious of our consciousness. So we agree to things that we don't know we agree to because they're playing a game. And I'm going to leave it at that because it, it gets confusing, actually. And it took it me really, it, it, my way through that web so I could even speak it to you so you can understand vaguely what I'm trying to convey to you. I don't know if you, you, you got me or not. I hope you did. I, I oh, really everybody does. That was that, that, uh, that, that was that, that was actually one of the things I was going to bring up was that was that it gets real tricky and confusing. It really, it really does. It gets confusing, and, 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 and you're going back and forth. You know, something makes sense, and the next day it doesn't make sense. And, and, <laughs> and even, even with... Even with you know when you start talking about the North Science Temple of America, it's like even that alone gets tricky and it, it makes sense one day, then it doesn't make sense the next day, and and that's that's why I said you know it, it it takes time just to figure it all out, and then it takes time to confirm everything, and then it takes time to to figure out what you just confirmed, and then it takes time to move on every everything that you just you took all this time, to, and that's and that and that's what I've been that that's what I've been doing for the past five or six years. And I'm at the point now that that this this movement and and, and I understand and I, I could speak on it now like before even even calling into this show or, or or even just talking to somebody I would only briefly touch on things because because I didn't want to say something that I didn't 100 percent believe in or 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 uh, say something wrong. Well, that is, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Because my yeah because my, my my whole my whole mission is to never steer anyone in the wrong. Because direction. there's a response. You uphold the responsibility. Yes. Yes, exactly. and and that's exactly. and right. one of the things about being on the airwaves is that there's a, a great responsibility that goes along with it. There's a lot yeah. of things that 
Brother Bragg wants to say, Hassan wants to say, there's a lot of things that yep. I want to say that I can't say on air. Right. Because yep. it, it's the air is not personal. It's responsible. Right. Because, you, you know, you, you, and there's, there's a difference. And so uh, you, you got to be very mindful of that. And basically, let me tell you, if you look at our ecosystem, it is very sophisticated simple and complex it has a dual uh, 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 a dual reality duality it has a dual duality where it's simple but very complex this is what these fees have established in an economy it's simple and complex depending on what purpose it serves because this is all about upholding foundations, trust, and contracts, malevolent contracts and agreement among malevolent beings. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. so, go ahead. Hey, Dave, could I, could I say one thing? Just, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Imagine yeah, yeah. This, just, just imagine this for one minute in commerce. Now, we're talking commerce here. Just imagine there's millions and millions of people that drive cars on the streets every day, all right? So there's millions of courtrooms in all these different municipalities, villages, townships, whatever you want to call them, all throughout America. Each one of these these courts, or whatever you want to call them, justice of the peace court, wherever they they conduct their business, they're taking their money. So just say across the country, there's let's let's do conservative three hundred thousand of these these places that take money on traffic violations in every day for these uh, statues and ordinances and whatnot. When this money is, is taken in, into account, who's accounted for it? We, we, you never get a reading of how much money was collected in parking tickets and fines and this and that. Now, this money comes from the taxpayers. These exactions taken from the taxpayers. But this money is not paying any of the, of the bills for the municipality. Now, you ever wonder, the, the municipalities and townships and, 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 and uh, cities and states, they're taking all this money. They invest this money. This money is taxpayer money. Where does the investment, when, they get, when the money comes back from the investments that these, these, these uh, states, townships, and whatnot make, where does this money go to? See, these are questions that you're never going to ask because people are too busy watching politics. This is just stuff that a poor man thinks about, things that, that you're not supposed to think about because this is the stuff they want your head so far away from this stuff. Just like <clears throat> as we walk around here in, in the land of America, you always hear people talking about, I'm an American, or when America was great. Well, America's always been great. Now, you and people who look like me, if you do your research, you're going to find out that you write smack dab in the middle of Egypt in every single sense of the world. Monuments, caves, everything. Artifacts, everything. They, they're getting ready to yeah. release information about all the giants, these giants that walk here in America that they wouldn't release. Smithsonian getting ready to drop the ball. Somebody sued them. They're getting ready to put it out here that giants roam this earth that look like you and me. Here in America, the same thing that they talked about in the Bible. Most things that they talked about is right here in America, but the, the information has been co-opted. and You don't know that you probably stand on the oldest continent, older than Africa, but they got everybody pointing to Africa. I'm just saying, I'm just one guy. This is just my belief. You don't have to believe me. You do your own research and what, what you find, you find for yourself. I don't know if you ever heard of Lemuria or Mu. I don't know if you know about Pangaria. I know you heard about these Siberian these boys cross the straits. You let people give you a story. These are the last people on the planet. These people are the, are the biggest forgers, liars that ever existed. They're stealing people's whole heritage. Birthright. You can't trust anything they, they, you, that's right, they birthright. You can't trust anything they say. You gotta do your own research. You gotta be, and you gotta jump off the ledge and, and know. I was gonna say, and then you gotta be careful because some of our own will still turn around and steal your birthright. <clears throat> Oh, without a doubt, that's 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 very very true. So yeah, this this was so. If anyone else likes to get in on the conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a call eight six six five one zero ninety twenty five eight six six five one zero ninety twenty five. Then hit star star. You know, one thing that I want to go ahead, brother Brack. American vest. You should never step foot on American soil. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about right here. But they got you, you know, America was named after America best speech, but he never touched American soil. It's a bunch of people, a bunch of persuado uh, scholars that wrote all this nonsense, especially the eugenics, who didn't know jack about what they were talking about. But it's science today, it's persuado science that stands today because it's not challenged. 
from their great scholars, from their great forgers and liars and whatever else you want to call them. That's a, that's just finishing my thought, Dave. I'm sorry, man. No, 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 no. I, I'm, you, 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 Hassan, you're hilarious. Yeah, Brother Braggs is, and I love it. When, when Brother Braggs speak, I just go ahead and, and, and shut up and, and let that brother, because it's, it's so much. This brother is, and, and, and like Hassan said, and I wanted to make this point, Hassan, and for Brother Bragg. Think about how much energy you've invested in this as individuals. Right. And, and, and there is an investment always in something. It's always an investment in something. But think of the process. It was never easy. Think of, of the times that it, it caused friction between you and acquaintances, you and friends, you and family, you and society right. itself. Why can't you just go along with everybody else? Because you're not right. everybody else. And, and, so, well, I, I and that is... That. I'm, exactly. See, and that's what I, and that's what we always, and I didn't come here to do that. But see, that's, see, that's the responsibility of a warrior is that we realize that we chose to be here for this time. Every person has their own individual purpose. And it's important to, to know what yours is. Hassan, Brother Bragg, knows what theirs are. We need to know what our individuals are because everybody has this thing. And I want to just, just to emphasize that, that this is not something that can be talked about and done in one show. Um, and, and the overall process of, of, of engaging this, there's many, many different methods to the same objective of being uh, um, sovereign. And I would say one of the things that I think is very, very important is not for us to allow the system for us to do their own battle, to fight for them by tearing down someone that's trying to be sovereign, when in actuality, they may be going about it in a different path. I, you know, and so I think it's very, very important for us to, to take our individual journeys. And, you know, Brother Braggs had talked about how these, the, 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 the jurisdictions and the municipalities were, had the courts for, for traffic laws and everything else. Let me tell you what this is really about. A lot of that cash or that so-called money is debt instruments. And what do they do? They created the economic debt instruments to get people to bribe away their birthright and to sell out their moral convictions for someone else's agenda. And what does that mean? They put this monetary system in place not for themselves, but for them to be able to control people and to have people at each other's throat fighting each other to maintain their system because they are fighting for something that doesn't really have any intrinsical value and is just a, a, a falsehood. And so this is what happens. These, the, the cash that moves around in currency is for the minions. Hey. They use that currency to 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 uh, uh, poison the water or to poison the currency system or the cash system so that it will be infused into your body into your way of life and it destroys you and it has been an effective job at that that's why they have the monetary system with the courts and all these other things where everybody else is paid in cash because that's their bribery system and not only are they bribing the individuals that pay it they're bribing the individuals that accept it. Hey, David, um, I had to uh, mute Hassan, just letting Hassan know if he won't chime back in before we um, end the broadcast, just hit star, start to yeah. unmute himself again. But it was too much back uh, wind noise. But, um, you know, when you yeah, mentioned, when I... you, when you mentioned um, like, tickets and stuff like, for example, how they did the people in living in uh, Ferguson. Now, whether or not those people voted or not, they were just trying to survive. They wasn't doing nothing but surviving day to day to day. And the municipality, the local corporation, um, was ticketing these people, stealing their currency because they didn't have no wealth, but taking their currency no. that they were living on day to day that they were needing to survive. And look, they borrow against that. That that is like projected revenue. Or oh, if we got so many uh, x amount of citizens in this town or residents in this town, 
um, and we issue X amount of tickets per officer, then we can expect to yep. raise this much annually. And I bet you they borrow against that in the banks accepted or whoever these, you know, the, all these corporations doing exactly. business with each other. Remember two things, that's legal slavery, first of all. And remember, they see, remember these municipalities, they don't have anything unless they take the exactions from the people because they don't generate any energy like that. They have to go to the people and take the people's energy mm. and take that. That's, that's right, Brother Brack. They prey it on the people. So just pay attention to the game. It's still slavery. It's just another form of the slavery. It's right. all the same game. It's just on different levels. And the whole thing, that's all I'm saying. Everybody around who listens, just learn the game. Pay attention to the game all the way around. Know what court you stand on. Remember this. When you go to play basketball, you stand on a basketball court. When you go to tennis, you're on a hey. tennis court. Every, when you play whatever game you are, soccer field, whatever, you're on a court. Know what court you want. That's all I'm saying. Once you know Man, brother you, Brad, know, you know well, how to go at the game. Right, because th there are different rules and regulations if you play the game. And this is the key. If you play by their rules, they will rule. That's why I always say that. And it's so you have to, you know, that is something that has to, to be individually uh, uh you have to develop a, a, a nomenclature or you have to develop a methodology of how you're going to, uh, you know, come, you know, deal with that or, or to mitigate those things. So, so very important. So listen, everyone, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, BIB and business is up next. If we don't have any other callers, brother Braggs blew up the spot. Thank you all. Uh, Hassan, great call in. Thank you for calling in Scotty. Thank you for your input and all of you that listen uh, to Tando Radio Show tomorrow. Uh, great creator Willen will be back here. And it's never goodbye. As always, I'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. And that's what we intend to do, is to give one away for those that will be engaging in that energy flow to share in collectively in the collective uh, prudence of it all. So much love, much respect. It's, uh, we'll go ahead and get out of here, Brother Bragg. Uh, if you would, chime us out. B.I.B. is coming up next. Much love, much respect. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace, peace.